If you love playing with beads and clay, but maybe you don't like stitching so much, you're going to love this project. This is faux bead embroidery. And with this technique, you can create pretty much any shape you want. This project is a butterfly for my patron Lila. That's what she requested for one of her special gifts. More on that later. The first thing and the most important thing you need to do for this technique is to practice using polymer clay. So here I have a sheet of polymer that I've rolled out just on a thick setting. It doesn't matter really at all. And you need to start practicing which beads you're going to use, where you're going to put them, and see how they look together and how they all fit together. This is a butterfly design that I just traced from a picture I found online. Kind of badly, but it doesn't really matter. You can use anything you want. I will include a link to this PDF for you. Some tips for choosing beads. Well, shaped two-hole beads lend a lot of interest and ways to puzzle piece them together. Like these ginkgo beads, they can fit in with other shapes. You've got these round areas, these convex and concave shapes, or iris duos. I use these little crescent beads for the outsides of the butterfly wings. So take the opportunity to dig through your stash and just find a whole bunch of beads that are going to work. Small rounds look great as dots. Do keep in mind that the background color will affect your translucent beads, and I'll show you examples of that in a minute. You'll find it helpful to have enough beads to make two butterflies or whatever it is you're making, so you can have one that you practiced, and then you can use your practice piece as a reference while you're making the one in epoxy clay. Now you'll notice on this practice piece I have strands of beads doing the outlining. Ideas for strands that you can use. These are little two millimeter round beads. You could string together seed beads, maybe 11 O's or 15 O's, but again practice and test. You can see in these photos I'm showing I did lots of practice tests to see which I thought looked best. One really easy thing you can use is ball chain, but ball chain does have those little spaces in between the balls, so you're going to get a slightly different look than if you string beads closely together. If you have strands of beads that come on plastic cord, you're going to want to restring them onto beading thread. That will be really the only time you need to do anything with beading thread. Not only will the plastic melt in the oven, but they don't drape as nicely and as gracefully as on a piece of thread. Be sure that you use a color of beading thread that matches your background. So on this one, for these seed beads, I used black beading thread. And then figure out about how many inches you need of each section and prepare a separate strand for each. I've tested several different bead strands for this one and have decided to use these one by two millimeter crystal roundels. I'm going to use two short strands to make the teardrops in here. You can see them better on this one. I actually use different beads for this one. I use 15 O's for the interior teardrops and 11 O's for the outside strand. So you can do that too. So I prepared little strands for my two teardrops and then a longer one that will be plenty of beads to go around the outside. And what you want to do is add stop beads to each end of your strand, but make them the same bead that you are using in the strand. That way, if it gets included in your project, it's fine. It matches. You do want to have good contrast between your background, your interior beads, and the strands, which is why I'm not going with these pink ones pretty as they are, but I'm going to use these black beads. I'm going to show you how to put the beads into epoxy clay. The benefit to epoxy clay is that not only is it a clay, it is a glue. If you were to bake this piece with the polymer clay with all of your beads in it, after baking these beads would fall right out because the polymer clay is not a glue. This piece you can see is done in epoxy clay. It dries rock hard. It is an air dry clay, which means you can include things that can't go in an oven. So if you have acrylic beads, those will be fine. And I'm just going to... Yep. Drop this on the table and none of those beads came out. I think one came out after I baked it. So these are in here very well. So you're going to follow the exact same steps first with polymer clay and then get out your epoxy clay. Now for this one I used black which looks nice and then for the one I'm going to show you I'm going to use white so you can see what I'm doing. 
You want to use gloves when you're mixing up the epoxy resin, especially the black. That stuff, wow, I, I just touched it and my hands were black. So get yourself an idea of how much clay you're going to want. Just use one of the parts for the moment. This can be a little hard to gauge because what you don't want to do is put this through the pasta machine uh, because it's an air dry clay, it's a glue, and it dries rock hard. So as you can imagine, you don't want that stuck in your pasta machine because it will be there forever. So I'm thinking, where's my pattern? Just cut out one of my patterns. That's pretty close to what I want. So I'm going to take just maybe a little bit more than half of that because this is a two part, you mix two parts together. You want to work on a non-stick surface like a silicone mat. Like I said, this is a very strong glue once it's cured. Use a separate utensil for pulling out part B than you did for part A. And you just want two equal parts. Now that you have two equal balls, you want to mix them together. And this is when the clock starts. So make sure you have everything ready before you get started. Mix these two parts together until they are one even color. My clay is all mixed. You can throw your gloves out, but if you want to reuse them, all you need to do is leave them on your hands and then go wash them with soap and water. And they will be clean. You can leave them to dry and use them next time. Once your clay is all mixed, now you can use an acrylic roller. Again, not your pasta machine. And roll it out to about an eighth of an inch thick. Now the good news with this stuff is that although it is an epoxy, a very strong glue, and dries rock hard, is that while it's still wet, you can clean all your tools very easily just with soap and water or a baby wipe. So let's see, make sure I've got enough there. I think I need to make it a little bigger. The working time that you have really depends on a lot of factors, uh, the humidity, the temperature, the age of your clay, but generally you have about an hour of good working time. My clay is old, so it may kick off a little quickly. Now I'm going to trace my pattern onto this clay. These lumps and bumps won't matter. They will not show at all. I'm not doing the back wing of this butterfly, just the front. You'll need a fine stylus. And make sure you leave yourself a little bit of room all around because things may change and you may need to edit the design as you go. So then you just trace the major design lines. You don't really have to get details if you have a detailed drawing that you're using as a pattern. Just these main lines. Oop. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but I can see the lines. Now I'm just going to bring in my beads and follow the pattern I established while practicing. I mentioned the transparent beads, so like I used these, I'm going to use these on the white, but if you use it on black, notice how that just like disappears. So I actually ended up using this lighter blue on the black. Like I said, anything with some translucency is going to look a little bit different depending on your background color. And you're, you're going to find that you'll need to edit a bit as you go. I've made a whole bunch of these. I think I've practiced four of them, and each one came out just a little bit different. And that's okay. They don't have to all be carbon copies. Now when I get to this section between the two wings, I want to leave a little bit of space for my beads to go in there. And I'm not pressing it down firmly now because I may need to move something around at some later point. But like with any design, you generally fill in the larger parts first and then go back in with the smaller bits. And you can have a lot of fun playing with these shaped beads. Like these are pie duos from Potomac Bead Company. It's just a quarter circle. It's a two hole bead. You can do some great bead embroidery designs with these, but you can also uh, use a ginkgo bead, which is similar. These are iris duos, I think. 
Are they drop duos? I don't remember. But see how you can nestle in these shapes? You can put them this way or the other way or one of each, whichever makes you happier. Paisley duos is such a graceful, pretty shape. I just had to include some of those in with the butterfly. And then these things are really cool. The Ava beads, I think. And I thought these just added a really nice detail. Got a little lentil bead in there. Super duos are fun because you can put them going either way. Holes up or holes not showing. So in this one, I took the time and I took a little needle tool and just oriented the, those so you didn't see the holes. So they were facing this way, like this. But you can also just put them with the holes facing up. And this is a fantastic tool when you start getting into the really small beads, just a little bent needle tool. You can poke it in the, in the holes and then position these exactly where you need them. I also love using the little rounds to make dots. Oop. And again, this tool is great to just pop in the hole and then you have a lot more control for nudging it about and positioning it just where you want it. This is also a great time. You know when you get those beads that have a clogged hole or you get the two hole beads and one hole is clogged? Kind of annoying, I know. But here's a great place you can use them because you're not using the holes, so it doesn't matter. And when you're designing, if something goes in there that you decide you don't like, this needle tool is perfect for going in, pulling it out, come back with something you like better. And all of the spaces in between the, these larger beads, we are going to fill in with seed beads. I found that even with experimenting and planning and having it all figured out, it still took me about 40 minutes to get all of my beads into place. So you definitely need to practice so that you can work quickly. Otherwise you'll find your epoxy clay is curing on you and you don't have time to finish before it hardens. See how those fit together in different ways? I think it's just so much fun to play with this puzzle piece things in. Now I've got my small strands of beads to add. So I'm going to take my first bead, a stop bead, and just press that down where I want my strand to start and just let the rest of them kind of slide down to it and gently press them in place sliding them down so that you get a nice even line without gaps. And when you put these on strands of thread, you want to make sure you leave yourself a little bit of excess thread. I probably could have made this one a little longer. What I'm going to do now is slide out the excess beads. Okay, that one can be there. And I found it was kind of a pain to go in there with scissors. So what I have here is a thread zap. It basically melts the thread. And that way I don't have to disturb it at all. I can just melt off the end, leave that end. And uh, I wasn't thinking when I was stringing these. I probably should have strung these on white thread. We can take care of those ends. And this is another one of those areas that you will probably do some editing. You can see on this there are like four areas of teardrops, but I really only have two, or this could count as one, three on my finished piece. And that's fine. that over just a little. There we go. Make some room for that. Scoot those down. And it's helpful to have some kind of a tool that's sort of flat but not real rounded that you can come in and press things down because sometimes your fingers don't want to go into a space. Wow, I cut it close with that. Looks like I've got one extra bead. Ooh. So I am going to press that in place. I'm not going to burn these off entirely yet. 
because I want it holding the beads in alignment until I'm all done. And then once I'm done, I can burn them off and get them completely out of the way. All right, now I'm just gonna add my outer ones and you might, it's kind of like following a maze where you take a look at your design and figure out the most efficient way. So for this one, I figured if I start here, I can come around and only have to do one more strand. And you do it the exact same way. Just try to gauge where your outer strand is going to go and put that bead right there. And just gently tap it in place. Oh, that's what I forgot here, it was some of those little balls. I thought I was missing something. And now I can decide, do I want these tight? I think I want to leave just the littlest gap here to put some seed beads. And that's why you want some extra thread and you can just grab your stop bead, slide it out of the way, and then I think I don't need that one. Do I need one more? Get those extra beads out of the way. Burn off, leaving a little of that thread. In case you need to grab it and move those around, you'll be able to. And the final step for beads is to fill in with seed beads. So for this black one, I used white. But for this white one, I'm going to use some gold 15-0 seed beads. You can orient the seed beads one of two different ways. You can put them the way I did here with the holes facing up, and you, of course, will see the holes. Or you can place them with the holes facing the side, and then you won't see the holes. Uh, that's going to be a little bit trickier in narrow areas because you'll have to pick it up like this with your tool and put it in, but then you have to press it down. So like the back of this tool works pretty well for that. If you want to have them holes facing up, all you need to do, and I'm just going to do one off here, is put it on the needle and then press it down and you can use, because this is tapered, you can use that to press that right in. So I'll leave that up to you, which way you want to do that. That's probably going to be a little more fiddly, but it will give you a more solid color because you won't have the darkness of the hole. And you just put them in there, filling in as much of the background as you can and trying to be sure that you press each one into the epoxy clay so that once the epoxy glue cures, they will be stuck in there. And this is the part that's definitely going to take the most time, but filling in that background is really what gives you that look of bead embroidery. I mentioned at the beginning that this project is for a special patron of mine. If you're familiar at all with Patreon, then you know there are different levels that you can support artists at. And one of my levels is the Creative Genius level. And one of the perks of the Creative Genius level is that after every six months of support at that level, I make you a custom piece of your choice, within reason. Then Lila asked for a butterfly in these colors, and she's gonna get her choice of either the black one or the white one, and I'll finish it up and send it off to her as a thank you gift. So if you'd like me to make you a special custom piece and a tutorial video, then check out patreon.com slash Sandy Sewin. I've finished placing all my beads. Now at the moment, this still looks a little rough, but this one step will kind of even everything out. You just need a piece of paper, any paper, and you want to place it over top and press. And you want to be firm, but don't press too hard. Just kind of burnish it down and try to get everything embedded evenly. You don't want to press so hard that you distort things, but just get it all pressed in there evenly. Let's 
see. And see how much nicer that looks already? At this point, I am going to burn off my thread ends because I made them black. Uh, they don't match the background. If you did what I said earlier and made your thread the same color as your background, it wouldn't be such an issue. And I'm going to have to make sure and clean epoxy clay off of my little electrode too. Now I need to add my butterfly body. Here you can see this is a quad bow bead from Potomac Beads, which I thought was absolutely perfect for a butterfly body. But you could use a series of beads, like a few rounds or these shaped beads. Whatever you find, just use your imagination with your stash. And I'm going to give this guy a little blue head. I think I like that gold head. I could even use one of these, like the Iris Duo. I'll give him a, a shaped head. Oh, well, that's kind of cute. And then just, again, make sure it's all embedded evenly. So it's pretty, pretty flush on top. Now, one last thing before we leave the clay to cure, and that's to cut this out. I would suggest about a sixteenth of an inch margin all around. Just use a craft knife and start cutting and try to leave an even edge. You can adjust this a little bit after cutting. I'm not doing a perfect job. Um, a warning is that if you really like your silicone mat, you may cut through your silicone mat doing this. But it, this has to be done now, and you don't want to lift it off the silicone mat because you will distort everything and just make a mess. So that's not an option. So just cut around the whole thing, leaving as even an edge as you can manage. I like can really feel this stiffening up. This is older clay, so it's not. Um, it's taking. It's going to cure a little bit more quickly than my brand new fresh black clay. Peel away the excess. And come in with your fingers and just kind of smooth and round that. You can come in with a tool, like in the places that should be indented, like there. And shape it so it's nice. And then leave it aside to cure, depending on the brand of epoxy clay you have. It's 24 hours to a full cure to rock hard for epoxy sculpt. One more thing you might like to do before you go off for a day is grab a silicone mold. Make sure it's silicone. And then you can make shapes with your leftover clay. Like I did with the black clay, I just pressed it into these molds. And I have some epoxy clay feathers that I might use in another project. But that way this doesn't go to waste. You can always do something with it. Here's my butterfly. It's nicely cured. Uh, let's check and see. Nope, none of the beads are coming out. Now, if some of them come out, especially if a major one comes out that you really want in there for your design, you can add it back in with a little bit of super glue. I suggest the gel. Or you can very carefully apply tiny, tiny dabs of two-part epoxy and glue them back in. So once this is done, how can you finish it? Well, a couple things. You can carve this. You can see I came in. I really didn't like the shape of this, and I will probably do more. So this has been about 21 hours, I think. 21, 22. You can see you can, you have to be careful. You want to take off very small amounts. And you can carve it. I just didn't like some of the lumpy shapes. I might come in and make that a little bit cleaner. So you can carve it. And, and I actually came in, oh, maybe three or four hours ago and did a little carving, and it was even easier. But you run the risk of damaging something, beads falling out. Although they should be in there by now. I just wanted to show you this feather. This I made from my leftover black pieces about a week ago. And just show you relatively how hard it is to carve. Can you see it? I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I can feel it. It's a lot more brittle. It can be done. You can sand it, carve it, drill it. Another thing you can do if you're a polymer clay artist, you'll be familiar with making a texture sheet 
and covering the back you could also make ropes of clay and cover the edges and make them a little bit neater which is what I'm planning to do after I tidy this up and you can put this right in the oven this piece this little black feather was put in the oven I added liquid clay to the back of it added my bit of gray polymer clay I just made it gray so you could see the difference and baked that and you can see that the cured epoxy clay is not damaged at all and then it's nicely finished and backed as long as you didn't add any beads that would melt in the oven then if you used all glass beads they can go right in the oven and you can finish that any way you like if you like the idea of sculpting with epoxy clay be sure to check out the epoxy and polymer clay playlist I put together for you right here in the upper right.